Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. One of the big discussions we've been having this week is whether there is an AI model slowdown. According to reports, OpenAI's Orion model is not showing the same jump in performance that was observed between GPT-3 and GPT-4. This apparently has led OpenAI to double down on reasoning and fine-tuning as a potential way to obtain the performance boost they expect from the next generation of frontier models. And now it appears that Google is joining OpenAI and exploring new avenues to tackle some of these challenges. According to the information sources at Google, their models are demonstrating the same lack of improvement. The information writes, Past versions of Google's flagship Gemini large language model improved at a faster rate when researchers used more data and computing power to train them. Google's experience is another indication that a core assumption about how to improve models, known as scaling laws, is being tested. Many researchers believe that models would improve at the same rate as long as they process more data while using more specialized AI chips, but those two factors don't seem to be enough. This is particularly troubling for Google, whose models have failed to see the same level of adoption as OpenAI's. There was a belief, perhaps, that Google could leapfrog OpenAI in this generation purely due to their advantage in computing resources. That appears less and less to be likely. So, following in the footsteps of OpenAI, Google is also looking to develop new methods of improving performance. Over recent weeks, Google DeepMind has put together a team to work on the development of reasoning models. That team is being led by principal research scientist Jack Ray and former Character.ai founder Noam Shazier to give a sense of how important they consider the work to be. Other DeepMind researchers are working on making manual improvements to the model, including changing so-called hyperparameters, which are the variables that determine how the model processes information and how quickly it draws connections between different concepts. Another problem Google has run into is duplicate copies of information within training data, which could hurt performance. Google has also experimented with synthetic training data, essentially feeding data generated by an LLM back into the corpus of training data. They've also added audio and video, And while it was believed that these steps would lead to significant improvements, sources at Google say they didn't make a major difference. Meta chief AI scientist and Turing Award winner Jan LeCun has been predicting these diminishing returns from model scaling for years. Yesterday, he posted on threads, I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. He referenced the statement from former OpenAI chief scientist Ilya Sutskever from earlier in the week, who said, the 2010s were the age of scaling. Now we're back in the age of wonder and discovery again. Everyone is looking for the next thing. Scaling the right thing matters now even more than ever. Now, what makes Ilya's comments more significant is that he was basically the chief proponent of the idea that you could just add more compute and data to keep scaling higher and higher. So the fact that he is moving away from that suggests that there is a changing understanding of the technical capabilities here. Lacoon, for his part, commented, we've been working on the next thing for a while. Lacoon is referring to the fundamental AI research team at Meta who are pursuing new architectures as a path towards AGI. Their focus is currently on world models which seek to train an AI on how objects and environments interact rather than just focusing on the connection between words. Still, not everyone is convinced that this is a real thing. Bindu Reddy writes, The AI slowdown is a non-story. The biggest reason AI is slowing down is that there's nowhere else to go. If you begin to saturate on benchmarks, nothing is left to do. 100 out of 100 is the highest score you can get. Now, moving over into the world of business models, Perplexity says they will begin experimenting with advertising on their platform. Starting this week, U.S. users will see ads in the format of sponsored follow-up questions. These ads will be placed to the side of generated answers and labeled as sponsored. The initial brands and agency partners for the launch include Indeed, Whole Foods, Universal Mechanic, and PMG. As an example, Perplexity showed a search for information about looking for a job with a sponsored follow-up that says, how can I use Indeed to enhance my job search? In a blog post, Perplexity explained, Ad programs like this help us generate revenue to share with our publisher partners. Experience has taught us that subscriptions alone do not generate enough revenue to create a sustainable revenue sharing program. Advertising is the best way to ensure a steady and scalable revenue stream. Perplexity said the ads themselves will be generated by AI rather than pre-written or edited by sponsors. Advertisers also won't get access to users' personal information. Regarding the choice of format, Perplexity wrote, We intentionally chose these formats because it integrates advertising in a way that still protects the utility, accuracy, and objectivity of answers. These ads will not change our commitment to maintaining a trusted service that provides you with direct, unbiased answers to your questions. Obviously, right now, how perplexity-style AI summaries influence the core business model of the web, which is basically search ads on Google, is one of the big open questions. So this will be really interesting to watch these experiments. Basically, I think they're a lot more consequential than just for perplexity as a company itself. Lastly today, speaking of business models, Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff thinks it's crazy talk that AI could hurt his company's bottom line. Benioff has very publicly planted his flag on the idea of AI agents over recent months, and we're about to find out whether it will save Salesforce from disruption. During a recent appearance on TechCrunch's Equity podcast, he said, what if your workforce had no limits? 
As far as being disrupted, Benioff believes that his moat is access to client data. He said, we manage 230 petabytes of data for our customers. You could say that might be one of the main things we do for them, and we do it with a security and a sharing model. Anyways, for me, it's interesting to note that Benioff feels like he has to justify the potential disruption to the SaaS business model from agents. He can say it's crazy talk all he wants, but there is absolutely no doubt in my experience and in my conversations with enterprises, while Benioff may be right that agents are Salesforce's future and that they're an even bigger deal and the company grows to lofty new heights, there is an incredible pressure being put on the sort of traditional per seat model of SaaS companies that will not be resolved easily or quickly. Certainly something that we're really interested in and thinking about a lot as we price super intelligent, but that is a conversation for another time and place. For now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.